Hello, and welcome back to our Bible study in the book of Ezekiel. Today, we will be discussing Ezekiel chapter 13. At the end of Ezekiel chapter 12, we had a series of uh, comments, uh, sayings that were directed at the prophecy of Ezekiel and others like him that sort of had a, a mistaken vision of what prophecy uh, was. In chapter 13, we go into a more detailed uh, condemnation of first false prophets and then false uh, prophetess, prophetesses. Um, and it comes with a, with a very sort of uh, similar statements throughout Peppered saying, Thus says the Lord God. Ezekiel is called upon to uh, prophesy against the prophets of Israel. The ones who, as God says, uh, prophesy from their own hearts and follow their own spirits and have nothing. He compares them to jackals, uh, those who are, don't really provide very much um, usefulness, but simply go around and scavenge uh, what is left over in the society. He calls upon them and says that they do have uh, false visions and lying div divinations. And by verse 8, after having all this talk about what they've done and what they are in the society, he begins to sort of utter, begin to utter his condemnations. He says he's against them because they have uttered falsehoods and seen lying visions. He says his hand is against them. He, comp he compares them to those who are simply saying what others want to hear. They say peace when there is no peace. And the comparison is also made about those who would build a wall and the prophets would smear it with whitewash. It's like they're saying, everything's fine. Um, go about your business. Uh, build houses. They are putting the best finish on this. They want to build a wall, build up a society, build up this idea, this religious idea that everything is fine when it's not. That it's all a mirage. That it's all just an image. It's all just a construction of their own uh, idea. And what we see here is that God says that that won't stand up. Uh, God's storm is coming against what they have attempted to build. I said, they have said there is peace, there is no peace. They have said there is security, there is no security. They have said that there is this idea that everything is fine. Everything is not fine. And these prophets have not heard what God is telling them. So this idea come, comes out. And then the next section, by verse 17, he turns to the uh, daughters of the people, the prophetesses, who prophesy again out of their own hearts. And they utilize a magic and um, sort of those occult things that begin to, to trick people into uh, giving them um, money and trick people into believing that everything is fine. And again... In this chapter, we see that he is intending to say that the idea behind it, the, the wonderful idea behind it, is their own um, aggrandizement. That these prophetesses do it uh, for their own purposes, not for the purposes of God. And as we get into there, and they too will reap the punishment of what is going to happen, that God will be against them. God will be against them. Now, the main purpose in both of these uh, judgment oracles is to go against uh, false prophets. And the thing is, the idea that there are false prophets is becomes a very, very modern idea as well. We are constantly against those who would claim to be speaking in the name of God, 
who would claim to have seen visions of God, but have not. Those who would claim that everything is fine, that God is not angry with his people, that God's judgment is not upon his people, that, you know, don't look this way, look that way. And we have built in uh, the Western world, we have built uh, churches of eternal ease and comfort. We have built churches where everything has been sort of provided to us and, and, and handed to us by people who have claimed that this is what our religion is supposed to be. The thing is, when we get down to it, what God has called us to is not these false prophets, not these false visions. But it's called us to something true, something from him. One thing which he says throughout this is that they have created these things out of their own hearts. And the thought is that they may, maybe in some ways they uh, thought they were visions from God. There's a place here where it says that, that God sort of placed this, you know, these visions so that they could be fooled. But if you truly know what God intends for you or intends for the world, you will not be fooled. What we see here in these, in these condemnations, that God deals very harshly with those who would misuse his name. And we would hope that in our world, uh, that the uh, church and those who have, who claim to be with, within God's name, that we would deal harshly as well with those who would misuse the name of God, and those who would misuse what God has given to us. Let us pray. Lord God, as we look to the words of your prophets, we would pray that we are not uh, drawn away by false prophets. We are, we are not uh, drawn away by those who would hear from their own minds and their own visions. We pray that we are given a sense of your purpose and peace to know what you have called us to to. to to do. We are not called to comfort and ease and security, but we are called to go forth to fight the battle for you. We say these things in Jesus' name. Amen.